Hi, this is Margaret O'Brien from dataminingdna.com. I'm going to walk through a step-by-step -step process to identify some of your DNA matches that are on both Ancestry and MyHeritage. You're going to need your DNA on Ancestry, your DNA on MyHeritage, but the free account is fine. And then part of the automation of this process is using Microsoft Excel. If you have Microsoft Excel, if you have access to it, just follow along step-by-step. -step. I'd show you every single click that you need to take. If you use uh, Google Sheets, whatever alternative you may use, you'd be able to do this too. You'd probably need to know some of the advanced filtering in that particular spreadsheet, but you can, I'm sure you can look it up. I'll link in the description below to a companion article on our blog that goes through four different ways to find your Ancestry DNA matches on MyHeritage. It includes scanning by eye, using search and filter, and using some automation. This last way that takes up the bulk of the article is a step through of what we're also showing in this video. 12 steps using a combination of Ancestry filters, Microsoft Excel, and an Excel macro to generate a list of match names that appear on both your Ancestry DNA match list and your MyHeritage match list. Now the gotcha is that the username has to be exactly the same. So for example, myself wouldn't come up in this method. So my username and my heritage when I signed up is using my nickname. It's, so it's Mags O'Brien. But on Ancestry, for no particular reason, I happen to use the more formal version of my name, which is Margaret O'Brien. That wouldn't come up with this method. So you are going to miss matches in comparison. They have to have the same username on both sites. But you are going to come back with a subset. And a subset is better than no set at all. Right, so let's crack on. There are 12 steps to this method. I'm going to go through each one. So step one is to download your matches from MyHeritage. Now, MyHeritage, unlike Ancestry, gives you the ability to export a list of all your DNA matches and their attributes, their central organs, etc., to your, your email. Ancestry doesn't provide that, so thank you, MyHeritage. The way to do it is on your match list in MyHeritage, you go to the advanced options, which are these three little dots here, and just choose the first option, export entire DNA matches list. Now it takes two, three, four minutes um, to take effect. But what happens is that MyHeritage sends to your email account that's associated with your profile, a zip file that contains your matches. Once it, com once it comes into your email, you simply download that to your local machine. So here is the zip file on my local machine. I'm going to extract it, extract all. So that extracts as a folder of the same name. I'll go into the folder, and here is a single file, your match list with the date. It is a CSV file. I'm going to open it in Microsoft Excel. I'm now going to save it as an Excel spreadsheet because I do want to run some macros in here. So save as, just change from CSV to the top option, and I'll just hit save. You know, you can see the columns. All I'm interested in is the name okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the name column into a i'm going to give myself a new spreadsheet so i'm now on step two so create an excel spreadsheet with just the list of my heritage names in worksheet one file new blank workbook and now i've copied that column with the name and i'm just going to paste control v paste step three is to remove duplicate names this is a necessary step otherwise you just get things go a bit awry later. And this is an Excel feature. It may be slightly different if you're using um, Google Spreadsheets or Google Sheets rather. You go to the data tab and then over here, under the data tools, this box here, this middle icon here, which is a little X on it, is remove duplicates. So you pick the column, which I hadn't done. So just highlight that column, come over here and click on this icon here to remove duplicates. It asked me, is it column A? Oh, my data has headers, I'll just say yes. Okay, so it's removed 56 duplicate values. So I'm just gonna call this my heritage column so I don't get confused. So the next step is we're going to get the names from Ancestry. Ancestry does not have the ability to export your match list. So this is a kind of quick and dirty way to get at the match names. I'm going to do it in multiple steps, and you'll explain why. It's basically if you try and do too many matches this way with Ancestry, your browser and Excel is going to 
start kind of falling over depending on your number of matches. So I'm going to set up a filter on Ancestry. First, I'm going to start with the matches which are most likely to be helpful to me, and that's the matches that have public linked trees. Whatever filter that you set, if you find later on that your Excel is hanging because it's just too much data, then you're just going to have to come back here and just reduce the number of matches that you're working with and just do it in several stages, right? Several rounds. On Ancestry here, I'm going to set up a filter. I'm going to start with my public link trees and then I'm going to do it again with my unlinked trees. If you're finding that it's still too many matches, you can go, go to your shared DNA here and stick in let's say 10 centimorgan as your minimum range, and then later on you can do eight to 10. So the next thing we're gonna do is we need to scroll down to the end of your matches. So as you know, um, Ancestry kind of loads about 50 set of matches at any given time. So as you're scrolling down, you get a little bit of a delay, and then the next set loads. We need to have all the matches in our screen. In order to do that, you can hold down the page down key. Now you can sit here with your finger on the page down key and that gets very dull, very fast. So I'm gonna do a little hack. I'm just gonna switch from my screen presentation to real life. Okay, I had a cup of coffee, I'm back, and I have got to the end of this filtered set. Or rather, my shower gel bottle has got to the end of this filtered set. So, I have just completed step five, page down to end of data. So, step six is to copy and paste as text into your Excel worksheet. What we're going to do is we are going to copy everything on this web page. So I'm going to control, hold down control A, which is select all. I'm going to control C for copy. I'm going to go to my spreadsheet. I'm going to give myself a new worksheet, okay? Rename this one comparison. And I'm going to give myself a new worksheet. I'm here, I'm going to paste. Now, it's important that you paste special. Where are we at? To paste special as text. Otherwise, you're going to get the images. You're going to get the, all the profile photos. It will come down and it'll just be a great big mess. So. I'm going to right click, choose paste special, and here are your options. I'm going to say text. Click OK. The next thing to do is we're going to remove blank lines. The reason we're going to remove blank lines is later on we're going to run a macro, and the macro is kind of looking for the end of the of the spreadsheet, and if there's a blank line, it just kind of stops there. So the blank lines tend to be at the end of notes. So here is my note, which is kind of plaintively saying to for this particular match that I sent two messages with no reply. But and after notes, there seems to be a blank line. So in Excel, to remove blank lines, it's quite simple. Just highlight the column, and we're going to search for the blank lines. So click on Find and Select. So Find and Select, and the fourth option here is Go to Special. And here it actually gives you an option for looking for blanks. So click on the blanks option and click OK. What that's done is it's, it's selected all the blank lines in this particular column. And now we just want to delete them. So to delete them, we're still in the home menu. So under the in the cells box here, the middle option here, just click delete. It'll delete the selected cells. Okay, so the next step is actually to run a macro. It's going to do two things. It's going to highlight the match names, and then it's going to do what I call a dedupe. I'll just explain that now. If the user has an image, what happens is the name is duplicated. Let's say the name was John Smith. If the user has a profile photo, then it comes down into this spreadsheet as John's, when we pasted special, as John Smith, John Smith. Okay, so there's just a couple of lines in the macro that says, well, if it's duped like that, if it's duplicated like that, then just have it. So this step is to run the macro. So if you've never run a macro before, what you need to do is you can under the developer tools, go to click on Visual Basic, and this will open a developer menu for you. I'm going to put it into my personal SSB project file. 
simply because it'll be available if I want to run this again in a different spreadsheet. Create a new module. So click on modules, insert module. I will rename it as ancestry stuff. So now I've got ancestry stuff module here. And for the script that I'm providing you, it's called highlight match names. Just go to your new module and just copy it. And from here, you can now just run it. You've got the worksheet open and you're just going to run it. Yeah. And just let it run. You see the blue circle is, well, it's, it's showing you that Excel is busy. So that was a, a few seconds for me. It got down to the end of, what was that, about 15,000 rows. Now, the reason why we've done that is that we now want to just filter out of these usernames. So the next step is, okay, quickly put that in. So the next step is to filter on the color red, and then we're going to copy and paste the names over beside the MyHeritage names we've already prepared. So up here at the top, um, I'm just I'm going. I'm on the developer tools menu, so I'm going to go back to home, and now I'm going to apply a filter on this column. Okay. Now this is the step where if you have a huge amount of data, it's just going to spin and spin and spin for a long time. I just crashed out of it eventually. So that's why I'm doing it in steps. It's a limitation of Excel when it's dealing with filters. But anyway, I've got this filter now. I'm now going to choose my filter. And I'm going to filter by color. And it's offering me the only color that it sees, which is bright red. So choose that. And now you see I've just got the usernames. Call this Ancestry. Now that I've got this filtered, I'm going to copy this entire column and I'm going to put it beside previously prepared my heritage list. So I have two separate and unconnected lists, which the ancestry list may well be a lot longer than the MyHeritage list. So in order to paste this, you want to paste values only. By that, I'm going to paste special, I'll copy and paste special, and choose values, because I don't want to keep that bright red. Or OK, make ancestry bold, and then I'll give myself a pane, a header pane. Please top row. Notice how I have HB and PS. I probably have quite a lot of those. So my step 10 is I want to remove the duplicate names now before I keep going. And these duplicates are going to be in the Ancestry column. We already removed the duplicates from the MyHeritage column. I'm going to highlight the Ancestry column. I am going to go to the Data menu. And this, under Data Tools, remove duplicates is this middle icon here. It's asking me if I want to expand to duplicates in my heritage. Definitely not. I only want to do this in the ancestry column. Otherwise, yeah, it would defeat the process. So just make sure you've highlighted the ancestry column and not the my heritage column. This is important. Continue with the, the default was to expand the selection. You choose continue with the current selection and then click on remove duplicates. And it's actually asking me, well, what column are you really interested in. Yes, I'm interested in, in Ancestry and my data has headers. So now you can see uh, 887 duplicates found out of 2,684. So those are those initials, the HBs and the JCs. So click OK. So having removed duplicates now from the Ancestry column, I can now continue to the magic, which is step 11. I'm going to now highlight the duplicates that remain that therefore must be between these two columns. There are no duplicates in column A, in the MyHeritage column, because one of the early steps, I eliminated the duplicates from this column. In my last step, I eliminated the duplicates from this column only. So now that any duplicates that remain must be across these two columns. So now I'm just going to highlight them both. And now I'm going to look for duplicates. In order to look for duplicates, you could use a macro. I'm going to use the inbuilt Excel functionality. I don't entirely trust it in that it does seem to pull back some false positives, but it hasn't given me false negatives yet. And you'll see what I mean. So the inbuilt highlight duplicates is on the home menu, conditional formatting, highlight cells, which is the top item here, with the condition that they are duplicate values. You just click that. 
And then it's asking me, what do you want to do? I'll take the default, which is light red fill with dark red text. That's fine. And you can see that, that has done it. That is absolutely correct. And as we scroll down, we'll see just a few appearing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the my heritage set. You just work now on one column. Like it doesn't matter really which column you work on. Um, I'm going to work on the my heritage column simply because it's the smaller column. And anytime I do filtering in Excel, I want to filter on the smallest, the smaller amount of data. Otherwise, it kind of just starts whinging and spinning. So I'm going to highlight the my heritage column. I'm going to put a filter on it. So over here on the home menu, sort and filter. I'm going to choose filter. And now I want to filter, filter by color, this kind of pink color here. So now I've got my duplicated values. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself another another worksheet. Click the plus there. So I'm just going to copy here. And then over here, or is it sheet three? I'm going to paste special. Uh, I'm going to, just going to take the values, no formatting and away we go. So what you'll see here is as I scroll down, every now and then I see, well, private s dot, private, private. If this was private Smith, okay, it's if you go looking on Ancestry for that, you're not going to find this name. This is kind of, these special characters are messing it up. So what I'm going to tell you is that the inbuilt functionality isn't quite right. So just to take an example of, um, let me take a fairly common name here. I'll take a Smith, Kathleen Smith. I'm just going to copy her. Just copied it to my clipboard because now I'm going to jump into Ancestry. I'm going to remove the filter and just reset filters. I'm just going to double check if I can find this particular username of Kathleen Smith. So I've got one Kathleen Smith in Ancestry and in my heritage I'm going to do this search on name Kathleen Smith and here we have Kathleen Smith. John Riley again no need to obscure that because it's it's a common name and I may well have multiple of them. Let's see if I have multiple of them in, in Ancestry. Just being Irish myself, let's see how you go John Riley. But yeah, okay. So in Ancestry I have two John Rileys. So in that case, if I find the John Riley, if there is only one, I don't know, on my heritage, uh, I only have one John Riley here. As a tree with 16 people, I just need to compare the trees. And then what I do is I work my way down. I will say, once I've compared the trees, I realize, okay, this, this is the same person. What I often find is that one tree on one site is much bigger than the other, which of course is what you're kind of hoping for, really. So what I will have is a separate column here saying, where is the bigger tree? So if I have bigger tree as a column here, I'll just stick in ancestry or my heritage. So uh, that's pretty much it. That is the technique. In terms of my filter and ancestry, I ran that for linked trees only. My next step would be to repeat it for unlinked trees, and then I'll repeat it for no trees. Now the reason I run it for no trees is I'm interested in the shared matches. Okay, hopefully that helps. I will put a link in the description below to an article on my blog which has detailed descriptions of these 12 steps and also has a copy of the macro that you can take and paste. And if you're a quiz at Excel and you think there's a better way of doing this, please comment and either on the blog or in YouTube, please comment and I would certainly take any suggestions because I am by no means an Excel whiz. I'll be running more tutorials and vids, so subscribe to the YouTube video if you want more of this kind of stuff. Thanks for watching.